join us for our, our second webcast. Um, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, to our 2019 edition of uh, ECRL 101. Um, I hope you've had a chance to introduce yourself in the chat room. Um, I'm Mary Jane Petrowski. I'm the Associate Director of ACRL. And I think I'm just going to turn off my video so it won't interfere. So none of our headshots will interfere with some of the detailed slides that you're going to see later on in the presentation. Oh, let's see. There we go. So the one hour session today is really designed based on survey research we've done um, to answer questions that people typically have about attending the, AC, the ALA annual conference for the first time. So we're gonna provide useful tips for planning uh, your conference experience. We're using the Zoom platform, so um, uh, we'll come back to you live at the end uh, for questions. This is really designed to be a 30 minute presentation because we wanna leave the last 30 minutes um, to have time for individual questions that perhaps we didn't address. And we'll be posting a link to the evaluation, so I hope everybody can take a few minutes to help us make improvements uh, for next year's session. Uh, because the meeting is so big, uh, everyone is muted. So as we go along, if you have questions, please pop them into the chat. Um, and those of us who aren't talking will um, try to answer them and we'll loop back to them at the end uh, if that's necessary. The session is being recorded and we will make the link available in the ALA Connect space uh, and on our conference website and we'll send out an email to all the first time attendees who might not have been able to make this session. Um, we, the ACRL Membership Committee has also prepared a, a nice checklist that you can print uh, and work through, um, so we'll post a link to that as well. If you have questions after the session, I'm always available at mpetrowski at ala.org. And I will be in the office uh, through, I guess, next Thursday when I fly to DC. Okay, so we are coming today to you um, from the Midwest. Uh, I'm here in Chicago. Um, we have Rachel in Michigan and Katie in Ohio. And I have to say it's been a pleasure working with both of them to put together this presentation uh, for you this year. Both uh, Rachel and Katie are past chairs of the membership committee and they've had so much fun that they are now members of the committee. So um, they have a lot of, between the three of us, we have, gosh, I don't know, probably 50 years of conference, uh, ALA <laughs> annual conference experience. Anyway, uh, we have online assistance today. I'm sorry, this slide shot should be uh, Eloa Sharp. Um, and she will be able to help you troubleshoot any issues that you might be having. I hope you don't, but if you do, um, uh, Elois is our resident expert. So just a little bit about how the conference is um, structured. Um, all of the events that we've listed here for you on the left are gonna be cited in the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. So when we use the word program, it's kind of an umbrella term that includes 324 um, presentations, 93 discussion groups, 16 interest group meetings, 12 update sessions, and 27 quote, news you can use, unquote, sessions. Um, and collectively, they span 96 different topics, which have been arranged into tracks, so as to minimize, you know, conflicts, conflicting sessions on the same topic. I just want to point out that if you're interested in the poster sessions, those are only on Saturday and Sunday. 
I do want to put in a plug for the opening keynote if you get in on time. Um, that's kind of the official kickoff at four o'clock in the afternoon, and it will not conflict with any pre-conferences or workshops that you might have registered for. Um, I do want to put in a quick plug um, for the ACRL membership meeting. This will happen kind of midday on Friday. It's our combined leadership slash uh, membership meeting um, that starts with lunch at noon in the Lincoln Room of the Washington Hilton Hotel. You're invited to come to that or to the Leadership Council, which starts at 2 uh, and goes until 3. So uh, here's a quick overview of what we're going to cover. Um, most important, an overview of the what we call the conference campus uh, and its relationship to the convention center, uh, shuttle service, um, registration information, the benefits of going to conference, um, and how to use the ALA online scheduler and the mobile app. And then um, we're just going to talk generally about uh, how to navigate sessions, cover some etiquette, um, and how to make the most of the exhibit hall. And then again, we will wrap up at the 30 minute mark and give you time for questions. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Washington DC, but we've starred the convention center uh, as well as the ACRL Conference Hotel, which this year happens to be the, uh, the Washington Hilton. This is a really famous hotel. It's where Reagan was shot. And when you look at those two stars, you might think, oh, you know, that's pretty walkable. Um, and I, you know, I flagged the conference hotel because um, all of the ACRL section meetings, um, division level committee meetings, um, board of director meetings, all of those are located in the Washington Hilton. So I just want to give you some sense of um, uh, how far apart those two. This is the, the outlier hotel. So I would recommend the Gale shuttle buses, which are free. And um, there's also the DC Metro, which is truly ex excellent. And I, I tend to use that a lot to shuttle back and forth. Um, we'll mention this more than once, but all of these business meetings are open. Um, except for a few that discuss confidential matters um, or award juries and things like that, uh, and you're welcome to attend. Most of the meetings and programs are one hour long, and there's a 30-minute um, break between each, and hopefully that will give you enough time, um, you know, to to travel between meetings, but you do want to think about geography when you're putting your schedule together because it it will it might take a little bit longer than 30 minutes, depending on how you go, to get from let's say the Washington Hilton back to the convention center. All right. So I'm going to assume everybody arrives safely. Um, and you'll probably want to register. So you want to head to the convention center. We open registration early on Thursday. Um, that's June 20th at 2 p.m. Um, and it will open again at 7.30 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And the shuttle buses will start running at noon on Thursday. Um, for those of you that haven't seen the shuttle bus system, there's about, I want to say, depending on the size of the city, there can be between like um, seven to nine different routes and they will loop around, um, you know, a fixed number of um, uh, the conference hotels. So I, I want to say this is the cheapest and probably coolest way to travel across the conference uh, campus. So if you're not familiar with the convention center, we are going to be occupying kind of three levels uh, of the convention center. Um, it's located between 7th and 9th streets and then in street and Mount Vernon place. 
So it's a good downtown location. You know you're in the right place if you see the Carnegie Library in Mount Vernon, Vernon Square that's been turned into an Apple store. So uh, it's kind of a little landmark for you. Here's a picture of the convention center. Um, it's a beautiful convention center. They've got about $4 million worth of artwork and um, it's easy to key on some of the really big pieces as, as landmarks. So when you register, uh, we'll give you a badge and a conference program book and um, you will need to wear your badge at all times when you're in the convention center, but just take it out when, um, when, you, when you go outside. Uh, we'll give you a lanyard, but if you want to recycle one of your old conference badges, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, just one little conference tip, you might want to adjust the length of your badge and how it hangs so that it, it's easy for people to read it when they're shaking their hands and maybe saying hello for the first time. Um, I actually use my badge as just a little convenient holder for my business cards because I, <laughs> it's easy to forget to pack them. Okay, here's a candid photo from the 2018 uh, conference. You see people reading Cognotes. This is the official daily newspaper of the ALA conference. It's free. It's published Saturday through Tuesday. Um, I want to recommend it because it's a good place to find out like what's coming up that day, um, some maybe changes or cancellations to programs, um, uh, giveaways at the various vendors. So anyway, these are scattered liberally throughout the convention center. Um, and, you know, if you don't like print, this is available um, via PDF on the conference website. When you register, I think you'll probably, you can't help seeing what we call the ribbon bar, and we have ribbons for first time attendees. You'll see people adding ribbons. Some people go crazy, um, you know, but they're, they're informative, they're fun, and basically people um, wear them to show their affiliations with various ALA divisions, chapters, roundtables, um, and so forth. Um, and I just want to put in a plug as long as we're talking about affiliations. We will have membership ribbons at our booth, um, which is 1125. So stop by and register to enter a drawing to win a free 2021 ACRL conference registration. We, um, we're going to be in Seattle in two years. So before Katie takes you on a deep dive into the scheduler, um, let me just say up front that it truly can be overwhelming to look at the number of meetings and presentations available in the scheduler. So here's some things to kind of uh, make your schedule maybe manageable. Um, first, first tip, think about attending a program totally unrelated to your area of specialization, because I think you'll be surprised at how often an idea you encounter in one of these sessions um, relates to your job. Second, um, program etiquette. It's okay to leave a session. Um, and here's what happens. Um, people submit program descriptions pretty, pretty, far in advance of the program book going to, to, to press. So the actual program focus can shift between the time a sub description is submitted and the conference. So if you walk into something and it's not quite what you expect, it is okay to politely leave. And likewise, um, if there's two things you want to go to, it's fine to leave in the middle. Nobody, nobody takes offense. Um, and if you're kind of stressed about making a decision about attending one conference session as opposed to the other, we do record all of the um, presentations that are labeled, if you will, annual conference programs. So you can go back and listen to things that, um, um, that you might have missed. And if you are in a, um, you know, 
a large presentation, most of them are going to have open floor mics for question and answers. So since we are recording these sessions, please use the microphones to ask your question so everyone can hear it. Um, and if, you know, a question comes to you later, you can always email the presenters. Um, and it's really fine to hang around and talk to people um, uh, after the meeting. So now I am going to turn the podium um, over to uh, Rachel, and she's going to talk about some of the benefits she has experienced as a member um, from attending the ALA annual conference. Yes, I want to talk to you about why, you know, as an ACRL member, maybe you, you know, if you're still on the fence about attending annual, you should go. Um, I see ACRL as my home division, and so when I attend annual, it's with the thought that I'm going to see the colleagues who've become my friends. So Katie and I have known each other a long time now. I've worked with Mary Jean a long time now. Dawn, who's, who is who um, is put our slides together and kind of pull our little group, ta our task force together, she's a new friend, somebody who I've just recently met. These are the people I've bumped into over time, and we have similar interests. Some of the times I find that I'm meeting new people um, during very thought provoking sessions. And so, you know, as Mary Jane mentioned, you know, if you have questions for the speaker, you want to like get up to that microphone and ask your question or maybe come by them later. But sometimes during a session, it's just a matter of leaning over to the person sitting next to you and saying, what was that term? Or where did you get that cup of coffee? Or, you know, just a little sort of opening salvo. Uh, officially, we would call that networking, but I feel like networking doesn't maybe get to that personal aspect of the connections that I've felt I've made at ALA Annual. Um, I feel like attending Annual also allows me the space to ask face-to-face -face questions. Um, and sometimes they're questions that maybe I'm feeling too shy to ask a speaker. Maybe I feel like I should have known that sort of thing already. Uh, and it's nice to be able to approach someone after a session or if you see them in the exhibit hall and just kind of probe a little bit further like how did you do the thing that you did or what did you mean by this phrase um, it allows me space to meet my com fellow committee members it allows me to see what's going on behind these conference calls and i feel like the ala annual allows me the space to maybe grab that snack or a cup of coffee and connect with folks in a way that's sometimes hard to do um, by a webinar. But making friends and you know sharing coffee, this is great and all, but there are other reasons why you should be attending. And so I wanna talk to you a little bit about how you're gonna sell this to your administration if you haven't had a chance to do so already. I like to call this the what's in it for me section. Um, because yeah, you're making friends, but you wanna be able to tell everybody why they should go. Now, as Mary Jane talked a little bit about, and Katie's gonna be talking about a little bit too, this conference program is maximized to uh, make the most out of your time away from your work. So this is a conference that's set up so that you're gonna be getting ideas and tips from hundreds of programs and discussion groups and updates and networking events and speakers. So um, there's gonna be tools that are gonna be able to help you identify what's the best program for your area of interest in librarianship. Um, and so we'll hear more about that, including um, the conference scheduler and the advanced program listings. Some ideas that we have on this website here that you're looking at, that you're seeing the URL for it, um, are arguments about saving your library some time and money. When you're on that exhibit floor, you're going to be reviewing products and services. You're going to be able to talk to hundreds of vendors down in that exhibit hall. You're going to develop those relationships with your library's current and potential vendors. Uh, and maybe find some cost savings uh, alternatives. You're going to comparison shop. You are going to become an even stronger library advocate. And I mean that at any level, not just in your own building, but maybe within your community or your state or even nationally. You will have um, options and opportunities to learn more uh, advocacy tools to put in your toolbox. You're going to make your library's network stronger too, because you're going to connect with librarians across all of these academic libraries, but also um, the public libraries within your state, maybe the special libraries, maybe your um, full media specialists who work in your districts, 
all of these folks are here too. And so it's a great time to meet with them. You are going to be a very excited and very well-informed professional after attending. Now I do wanna add that if you are currently a graduate student, you should definitely, definitely attend, please do. Because it's at ALA Annual where you can attend talks that are gonna strengthen your specific job or research interests. You're going to broaden and enhance your own research. You're going to interact and network with peers from other universities and organizations. Plus, many library schools are hosting reception, so there's that too. Um, and Katie's gonna talk a little bit about this too, but it's time to learn how to have fun and engage in a large conference venue. It's difficult to do, but so, so much value there. Um, and finally, and perhaps maybe most importantly, this is gonna give you time and space to speak with potential mentors and icons in your field of interest. There are librarians across all ranges of their careers and they're here and they want to meet with you. So stop by, we want to ask that you say hello, strike up a conversation with them. So at this time, I'm gonna turn the podium over to Katie. She's gonna walk you through some of the logistics so that when you get to annual, you're making the most efficient use of your time. Okay, thanks, Rachel. So like Richie, Rachel mentioned, and actually Mary Jane too, um, there's a lot going on at conference. So before you go, it's a good idea to come up with a plan for what you'd like to attend. Um, there are many, many wonderful sessions, author signings, discussion groups, presentations, and social events that are scheduled during annual. So having a good idea of what's out there that relates to your work and research interests um, the things you want to go to, the things you really have to go to, um, will help you prioritize your time. Even if you end up changing your plans, uh, having a rough guide can go a long way in helping when you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all the different choices. And the scheduler is the tool to help you do this. It's the first link in the navigation bar of the conference website. You don't need to sign in to browse all the available sessions, but you can create a customized schedule when you log in with your ALA uh, username and password. The first thing you see once you do that is the privacy notice. Be sure that you read through that to know how your information is being collected and used. And you do have to um, sign, the consent, sign the consent to go in and build your custom schedule. But before I go any farther, I want to mention that there is also a conference app that can be found in the Apple and Android stores. In the app, users can access presentations, exhibitors list, posters, and connect with other attendees. There's some social aspects in it. Users can also take notes adjacent to um, available presentation slides, and you can draw directly on the slides in the app. Um, today I'm showing the scheduler, but Anything you can do here is also reflected in the mobile app and um, any last minute like room changes, those kinds of things also show up in the mobile app. So when you first log in to the scheduler, back to that now, um, you are taken to your profile where you can share a bit about yourself. You'll also um, want to look at the sharing settings here where you have the choice of opting in to sharing your contact information with other attendees and allowing others to see the sessions that you have favorited and plan to attend. I know some people would rather not share that information. It can be helpful when you're networking though. So um, when uh, you remember, oh, who's that person I talked to in that one session, um, that can be helpful. And I see a question about are the mobile and the web version synced? Yes, I think they are. If you favorite things in the um, scheduler, actually I'm gonna, when we get to the question and answer part, I'll double check that. Um, but I believe, yes, they are. Um, what you favorite shows up in your, if you favorite in the scheduler, it shows up in the app. Um, Okay, so yes, networking is one of the major benefits of attending ALA Annual in person. Like I said, you will often see the same like faces and meetings more than once, and that can be a way to start a conversation with somebody that leads to a new professional co um, connection. You have the opportunity, a uh, few people mentioned this already too, to introduce yourself to speakers after sessions, and um, if you're interested in joining a particular committee, 
the easiest way is to find it in the scheduler, see where they're meeting, show up to the meeting in person and indicate that you're interested. That is a surefire way to uh, get involved. So now uh, your profile is complete. You're ready to start searching the scheduler for sessions. You click the full schedule button to get to the complete list. And you have many options when it comes to browsing and narrowing down the available sessions. If you're interested in a particular subject like digital libraries or information literacy or a particular type of library, a meeting time that fits for your, an open slot in your schedule, or there's a particular subgroup that you're interested in, you can use the drop downs there to um, make those specific selections. However, I do know ALA and ACRL use many acronyms and initials in their group names. So in the handout that we will post with the, um, the, the recording of this presentation, there is an outline of the ACRL groups and which initials they use, which can help you with that. So if you know a particular group is hosting a meeting, feel free to use the search box as well. Um, ALA and ACRL have an open meeting policy. You're free to attend any committee meeting, presentation, even if you're not a member of the group. Every once in a while, you will come across sessions that are marked as closed. Those are the sessions that um, only the group's members can attend. And that's things like um, award juries, nominating committees, scholarship grants, those things that um, require some private deliberation. So yes, most of the things are open. Please feel free to go and attend. To add um, any session to your personalized calendar, you click the star to favorite it. And yeah. clicking the star again, uh, Mary Jane, your mic is still on. Um, clicking the star again removes it. Another extremely useful feature of the scheduler is the exhibit hall section. Um, the exhibit hall, like you saw on that map, is quite large and has many substages and presentation areas. You can search for programs happening in just those areas. The Book Buzz Theater features information from publishers on new titles. A personal favorite of mine is the What's Cooking at ALA. Um, it's a cooking stage with cooking demos. It's great. Um, the Pop Top stage has readings and discussions and presentations on popular topics in libraries. The graphic novel and gaming stage has author and game creator presentations. And finally, um, new this year is the chapter one stage that features genres not previously um, featured on any ALA stage before. So things like international content, audiobooks, and the poetry slam. And it will also um, host a few live podcast recordings. Also in the exhibit hall floor are the poster presentations. Um, and those will be there during the, the scheduled times. One more thing to think about when planning for your conference is thinking about which exhibitors and vendors you'd like to speak to. This could be a company that your library is already working with and me or one that you're seeking a service from that you don't work with yet. The vendors are um, listed in the scheduler as well and you can go through and create a personalized list of vendors and their booth numbers as, in addition to your personal calendar. And on the slide that's up now you can see you can go through and favorite presenters, you can um, find people you know, find people you want to talk to, and favorite other attendees if they have chosen to share their information. Exhibitors is where you'll find the exhibitors you favorited and the posters are the poster presentations you favorited. So you can build a decently customized schedule there. Um, so the exhibit hall is very large and um, it's another place where having a plan can help. You can use the scheduler to look up the vendors, like I said, get their booth numbers. And when you get to the exhibits, the aisles are pretty clearly labeled with hanging signs and booth numbers are sequential along those aisles. Um, as Rachel said, vendors really would like to talk to you about their products and hear your questions and feedback. So um, it can be a useful conversation to have talking to vendors. So once you've gone through and added your sessions, I was, we saw this, uh, the customized schedule already, you can always remove things by clicking the start in and take them off and that is broken down by day. 
um, you can export that list into your favorite calendar app, um, which is always one of my favorites. Some sessions you might consider adding to your schedule. Um, earlier, we had the slide up with all of the featured presenters in the auditorium speaker series. There are many, many to choose from. I would highly recommend that you attend those. Um, they can get fairly popular and have long lines, but they are very worthwhile. Aside from the featured speakers, I also want to recommend some ACRL hosted sessions. The ACRL President's Program equity, diversity, inclusion, and leadership, where do we go from here, is Saturday morning at 1030 in the Convention Center. It will be a discussion of inclusivity and leadership in libraries with Dr. Angela Springer. And last but not least, I highly recommend that you attend the ACRL 101 in-person session, which is really the part two to this orientation. Um, for those of you looking to get more involved in ACRL, we'll have representatives from the sections and interest groups for you to meet and talk to. This will be happening Saturday morning from 8.30 to 10 a.m. And this will be in that ACRL Hilton. Um, so it's separate from the president's program. Breakfast is provided, but it is bring your own caffeine. And I know for those of you coming from the West Coast, that 8.30 a.m. start time will be pretty rough. So please be aware you do uh, need to bring caffeine to that if you would like to partake. Um, this is a great way to meet other ACRL members as well as those who are leaders in their sections and interest groups. If you can't make it to this session though, another good way to connect to ACRL folks is to attend a group's happy hour or social. Um, and I'm actually gonna pause right now to post this link into the chat there is a listing in CNRL News um, of the ACRL events happening at annual conference. So a, a few of those are ticketed, but not many. Generally, it's much more like a meetup where you all show up at the same place and provide your own food and drinks. Um, but yeah, the socials are a good way to find a group of colleagues who are always happy to um, meet new um, members. So I know this is an issue for me and it is for a lot of people in our profession. You really do have to challenge your inner introvert to attend some of the social functions. Large conferences and meetings with unfamiliar people can be kind of a challenge and yeah if you can find the energy to go even if it's for half an hour a lot of these are sort of drop in and leave. Um, a lot of them are double booked. People will not notice if you stay for briefly and then leave if you need to. But it is a really good way to meet people to, who are in the groups that you would like to be involved with. Um, introduce yourself to folks you don't know. One easy way is to find a table with an empty chair and just ask if it's taken, can I sit here? And that usually leads to some basic conversation or where are you from types of things. So yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but it's worthwhile as well. Okay, from here, I am going to turn it back over to Rachel, excuse me, for a wrap up and to take your questions. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I really do hope to see you in person at ALA Annual. I'm going to make a, another plug for ACRL 101, that in-person session. And yes, we will have some pastry and some fruit for you. You've got to bring your own coffee or other caffeinated beverage. 8.30 is early for all of us. Um, yep, I'm getting a little closer to my mic. I was having some mic issues earlier. Um, and they seem to not be totally fixed, so bear with me. Um, Later this week, we are going to hand, uh, provide two of handouts for you. Those will be posted. They're going to come up on our ACRL website and also on ALA Connect. So you'll be able to download them and print them at your convenience. The first will be that checklist, making sure you don't forget any of those conference essentials like chargers or business cards. The other one is going to give you a nice reminder. It, I'm sorry, and it gives you a nice reminder of the things that Katie covered today with the scheduler and all of those details. Um, the other will provide you a little bit of an overview of getting ready for preparing for a large conference like, a, for, well, like ALA Annual. 
Um, we talk about weather conditions, both inside and outside the building, because those are two different things. And how do you pack for that? Things like dress codes, stuff like that. Um, at this time, I also want to um, open up the floor for any questions or anything that we can do for you. We're also going to post a link to an evaluation so that you can help us continue to improve this, um, this session, this online webinar session, so that we can get uh, the next generation of folks ready to go to their first conference as well. So we are um, all coming back online. You'll see us popping back up on our cameras. The evaluation link is there on your chat screen. And um, it is open for questions. Please send them our way. And as you send the questions, please do, for those of you who came in after Lois's lovely introduction, change the to field in the chat to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see what you're asking. While we're waiting for the questions to come in, this is Mary Jane again. I just want to jump in and say, you might be wondering how many people come. And if it's a good conference, we can, we'll have somewhere between 15 and 20,000 attendees. So um, um, there'll be a lot of librarians there. And I just quickly want to circle back um, to clothing and say that, I looked ahead to the temperature in Washington uh, next week for, for the conference, and it looks like the highs are going to be in the high 80s and low 90s. So it's going to be pretty, pretty hot and humid. And I just want to say, um, and you might know this already, but there is a vast temperature difference between hotel meeting rooms and, and the outside. So I would really, really encourage everybody to dress in layers because it's it's seriously uh, over refrigerated and um, it's hard to sit through a meeting if you're shivering and you you don't want to have to go out and buy extra clothes so you know we mentioned this on the handout but it is business it's business casual um, and um, for what it's worth, I would say don't try to break in new shoes or sandals at conference because you will really be amazed at how many steps, how much you're walking. And it is so easy to get a blister, um, you know, just walking around outside in, in the humid weather. And uh, we haven't said too much about food, but I just quickly want to say two things. The opening reception on Friday when the exhibit floor opens at five o'clock is an opportunity um, to take advantage of some heavy hors d'oeuvres and drinks. It's from five to 7.30. So if you're really hungry, it's, um, it's a great place for a free bite and there's a, there'll be a lot of people there. And again, circling back to food, I don't wanna get your expectations up too much when we mention the word breakfast. At 101 by breakfast, what we really mean is yogurt, scones, fruit, and you know, breakfast pastries. Um, we opted to do that this year instead of um, just coffee because catering is so, so expensive in Washington, DC, and we felt like we got a little more bang for our buck uh, since a lot of people tend to bring their coffee um, already. I put in a link to also talking about food, the American Library's um, deep guide to annual conference at DC. They have a lovely guide to the dining options that are around the convention area. So if you are looking for restaurant ideas, that's a good place to start. And I'll also say again, coming back to food, food gets to be a really important thing. If you have kind of a jam-packed day and you literally don't have any breaks, you might just want to camel up and pack some, you know, some energy bars and nuts or trail mix just in case you literally don't have any time to grab a bite. But there, there will be a lot of um, concession stands in the convention center, including the exhibit floor. And we haven't touched on this before, but many vendors have their own receptions, breakfasts, and so forth. And these are invitation only events. So I would ask around and see if anyone else in your library got an invitation that either they're not gonna use 
because they're not going or a conflict and see if you can borrow an invitation to a vendor event because <laughs> those can be quite lavish. And again, on the food theme, I don't know why I'm really focused on this today, but um, we didn't mention that when the exhibit floor closes on noon around Monday noon or two o'clock, I can't quite remember, but a lot of the publishers will either give away their books or sell them at considerable discounts. So if you're looking for gifts, if you're looking for, I always zero in on the cookbooks because you can pick up some of the James Beard award-winning cookbooks um, sort of hot off of the press. So you might want to, you know, schedule a little bit of shopping time on, on the exhibit floor before the exhibits close. Um, so when you do register, by the way, one of the things they give you um, is kind of a little mini schedule, including the exhibit hours, the reg hours, um, the shuttle bus hours, all the things that you just might want for ready reference. Questions from attendees? What we've just run through, by the way, are all the questions that kind of came up yesterday when we did this webcast. Um, so Rachel and Katie, if I didn't touch on something that we heard people ask yesterday, feel free to um, feel free to jump in. I think we hit them all. I think we did too. I think the only other question we had was about inviting uh, inviting folks to sessions and to the exhibit hall um, and we had decided that the exhibit hall really you do need to have a an exhibit hall pass in order to enter the exhibit hall which means you would have to get your plus one and an, an exhibit hall pass and I believe we had decided we found that was good for Sunday and Monday only that there was a time frame that they were doing that um, as for attending sessions if you were trying to sneak someone into a session I think we all decided that we've never seen anyone get stopped from attending a session. <laughs> um, I don't know that I, it's sanctioned, but. Um, On the other hand, yesterday, somebody did ask us um, what kind of fun things were there to do in Washington, DC. Um, so some of us sort of volunteered what we were going to do. Um, I know some museums like the Holocaust Museum are super popular. So if you're thinking of going to that in particular, it's a good idea to get your ticket ahead of time because it's so popular you can't just um, drop in. Um, I know some of the museums are free. In fact, I think many of them are free, like the National Portrait Gallery. Um, I know one of the things I'm going to do is try to go see the um, the Obama and Michelle Obama portraits because I, I like both of those artists. Um, and certainly, um, I'm trying to think. Anyway, the, you know, Washington DC is very walkable. We're in a good location to get to many things. So uh, I think the Metro will be your friend as you as you travel around the city. My children are very excited. We're going to sweat it out at the uh, zoo on Friday. And we are taking Metro over there from our conference hotel. And that is part of the excitement of going. <laughs> they get to take the train. We don't have, there is not public transportation to speak of in a small college town. So this is all very new. Well, I don't know if you've thought ahead, everybody, to how you're going to get from the airport um, into downtown DC, but um, the metro is great. Um, I think it's about maybe a 20, 20 minute ride in. Um, so depending on where your um, hotel is, you can easily figure out which, which stop you get off at, but it's, um, it's a nice way to, nice way to go. There's a question yeah. about um, registration hours. I'm trying to find that on the website right now. I think I found it. Let's see. It says um, pretty much Thursdays until five, Fridays till seven, and then Saturday and Sunday until five, and Monday till two. So I'll put that link in there. Oh, I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. <laughs> We were on the same page, I think. <laughs> Jen, 
generally registering is very, very quick. It's um, a quick scan of the barcode in the email that you got. Um, they hand you your, your registration book, the little coupon book for the exhibit hall. And if you don't want those, you can also choose to say, no, thank you. I, I, since I use the app so heavily, I don't take the big registration book anymore because I have learned that that gets very heavy by the end of the conference. Um, and speaking of heavy, I just want to say, um, if this is your first time on the exhibit floor, there's going to be a temptation like to pick up lots of swag, um, lots of, you know, free stuff. And you might end up with like a pretty heavy load. So there will be like a, um, a UPS um, office there where you can mail things back to yourself or your library. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, maybe going over your baggage weight. To, to, there's a question about what day is best to go to the exhibits. Um, I actually prefer Sunday or Monday because it tends to be a little less crowded to work your way through the exhibits. But I usually don't try to do it all in one go either. I get just too much sensory, too, too much. So I'll go in one or two trips rather than doing it all at once. I have learned, I, I, I now appreciate the opening of exhibits for its craziness, but you have to be in that right, in that mindset where you're like, I am it's going crowd. to absorb <laughs> all of this and just be a part of it. But Katie, I'm like you, otherwise I would prefer not to, it, it's, it's a lot, it is a lot. I mean, even for folks, like I tend to think of myself as an outgoing person and it is a lot of happening around you and there's just a lot of people so pace yourself through this like don't think you're going to do it all in one like four hour period because your brain will explode but that's the other, an actual scientific fact <laughs> well the other thing i would say about the exhibits is um the exhibitors actually underwrite a huge amount of the cost of putting on the conference so um you'll notice that many things are sponsored by various companies. So if you wanna go by and thank um, a vendor for their support of a program or something, the buses, you know, that would, that would be a nice thing because, you know, the, the vendors do look at the traffic and the conversations and making their decision about whether to come back and exhibit um, in the future. So, uh, any words of appreciation that you want to share with those folks would be very well received. And that actually reminds me of a question that came up at the, um, yesterday's presentation. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked for tips for starting conversations with vendors. Yeah. And uh, my favorite is if it's somebody that you're working with, um, what's new from you guys these days? What new products are you, what's out there that you're working on? Um, but the other thing I, especially if it's somebody I've been working with, um, there's, for example, I have a vendor that I have a very specific thing I would like to see them doing that they're not doing yet. So I plan to go visit their booth and bring that suggestion to them in person to have that face, face conversation. Like, oh, we would love it if you guys could do X, Y, Z thing. Um, and then if it's a vendor that you've never seen before, um, oh, who are you? What types of services do you offer? Um, that type of conversation is also worthwhile. And I think, I don't think we've said that this yet today. Many vendors will want to um, scan. There's a QR code on your badge that um, they'll scan to either enter you into a drawing or just to count that you are there. Um, that is a way that they can get you on their mailing list <laughs> too. Um, but you can always choose to unsubscribe from those later if at your leisure. You know, I want to add in for, you know, as you're working and, and working your way through, um, I think Mary Jane mentioned it earlier, we have an ACRL booth mm. at the conference. We have couches. So if you are... <laughs> you're tired. <laughs> yes, you know, for real, if you are tired or you just need to just not maybe engage for a minute or so, come sit with us. We are staffing that booth the entire time the exhibit, not, not, not we, you know, but members of, of ACRL will be staffing that booth, volunteers. We have a huge reference book where we can help you like find things or learn things or know things. 
but also we can just let you sit and be for a moment too. So it's sort of an extra space where you can get a little break. But wait a minute, that reminds me, there's some yeah. fun things on the exhibit floor. There will be, um, there's always people offering massage for like free massages. Yeah. Um, so if you really just need, if your feet are tired, your shoulders are tired, you can, you can take a time out on the exhibit floor. And there's also, you know, there's always people selling like jewelry and different kinds of library chotskis. And of course, there is also the ALA bookstore, which will have a big presence um, outside the exhibit floor. So if you're looking for a book that ACRL has recently published or anything that ALA publishing has published, um, you'll be able to, to pick up a, a copy, um, of course, at the member discount. I bought socks. I had socks at the ALA store. Big, big hit. But, you know, I think your suggestion to break up your trips to the exhibit hall, that kind of makes sense, you know. Um, you know, because there will be off-peak times when a lot of people are, let's say, going to an auditorium speaker or going to some big, you know, um, presentation. So, you know, there's always a tension with the vendors between, you know, giving people enough no conflict time um, so that they get the foot traffic that, you know, they feel makes their, you know, investment worthwhile. So do try to nip in. It's worth it. It's fun. Well, I'm looking at the time. It looks like we're we've got five minutes left. So are there are there any burning questions that we that that we could answer for you? Oh yeah, good push, Katie. One more time, that evaluation link is on there. If there are things that we have not discussed um, or came up later or you wish you had heard more about, let us know because then we can plan that for the next time we do this session. Um, and again, you have our contact information as well. Um, Mary Jane is actually in, I think, in the chat. Um, please contact us, reach out to us. We want to answer your questions. We We've done this a lot and we can help you. We have that information to share with you. So I hope, you know, before we sign off, I hope we will see all of you at the ACRL 101 program next Saturday um, and or the ACRL membership slash leadership council meeting on Friday. Again, that starts at noon uh, with a breakfast. I mean, I'm sorry, it starts in there with lunch, followed by the, uh, the leadership slash membership meeting. And I, 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 I've mentioned this a couple of times because if you're, you, you know, want to get a high level view of what ACRL is doing strategically to advance um, the plan for excellence, um, that's a good place. We're going to be actually spending a big chunk of that meeting talking about the upcoming changes to the ALA um, organization. Um, we've got maybe seven what we call streams of change going on uh, at the organization right now, you know, including looking for a new executive director. We're physically going to move our location this year. So um, there's some there's some change coming and this would be an excellent, excellent meeting to uh, get up to speed on all that and hear what some of the concerns and questions are that um, that have come up. Last call. Last call. <laughs> they are coming to pick up our trunks right now to ship them to, to Washington, D.C. as I speak. So I've got one or two more things to put in the trunks. <laughs> Well, if nobody else has any questions, we could probably wrap up so you can get to packing. <laughs> 
Well, again, thank you, everybody. It's, it looks like we'll sign off on time. And um, again, follow up with us if, you know, if you have questions. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks and everybody safe, for coming. safe travels. Yes.